in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. praise god Amen. our father and our god we thank you lord because of this wonderful day it's a day you've made and you said we should rejoice and be glad in it we thank you lord because of your word that is coming to us this morning and that is coming with power fire and life and everybody will be blessed and touched by your spirit glory to your name thank you father for in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. praise god uh, the title of today's message is unfair but just unfair but just a text is taken from the book of matthew chapter 20 verse 1 to 16 quite a long reading it says for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day he sent them into his vineyard and he went out about the third hour and saw the standing idol in the marketplace and he said unto them go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right i will give you and they went their way again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise and about the eleventh high went out and found others standing idle and said unto them what stand ye here all day all the day idle they say unto him because no man hath hired us he said unto them go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right that shall ye receive so when he even was come the lord of the vineyard said unto his servant unto his steward call the laborers and give them their hire beginning from the last unto the first and when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour they received every man a penny but when the first came they supposed that they should have received more and they likewise received every man a penny and when they had received it they murmured against the good men of the house, saying, This last I have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be the first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Uh, the title of today's message once again is unfair but just and we can see this perfectly in the parable in the story that the lord jesus christ told in the book of matthew chapter 20 verse 1 to 16 and um, this is the story about a good man who had a vineyard and um, hired people to work in this vineyard from the beginning of the day till the eleventh hour and these people kept on working and at the end of the day he gave everyone a penny he agreed with the first people that worked the laborers to receive a penny after their labor yet he gave the same thing to those who he hired at the eleventh hour and this is what we can call a case of being unfair yet you're just uh, it's just the story of god who is unfair when it comes to his grace his love and his mercy towards our lives uh, in other words that means that our god gives unto us does not give god is unfair with favor grace and mercy as he does not give back the evil that we desire yet is just and gives you the good that you deserve and even more when you want to talk about fairness that means that there's equality you can say that there's 
equity. You do me as I do you. You get the exact reward that you deserve. But when it comes to the positive, God ensures that you get the reward that you deserve. And then even in these, there is a level of unfairness because sometimes he does not just give you what you deserve. That is good. He gives you more than you deserve. And this appears to be fair unto others who have not received more than they deserve. But trust me, God is always giving you what you deserve when it comes to the positive. And this unfairness also comes to play when he withholds from you what you deserve, which is wrong. The bad that you've done that you should have received a, a recompense for yet it withholds you from getting this wrong this bad which is an expression of his mercy an expression of his favor and grace would be that when you deserve good he ensures that you get this good and even gives you more and to the natural man we see this sometimes as being unfair Yet, he has not been unjust. Favor only feels unfair because when you are not the one who is experiencing this favor, you feel cheated. Mind you, it's only a feeling, but it does not count because God is fair. What you deserve, he gives to you that is good. Yet, the evil that you deserve, he shields you from it. So if you want to actually make a balance sheet for this, you are in debt to God because everyone owes God. Everyone owes God. You might say, I have not received more than I should actually, you, I have not received more than I deserve like others. But God is not under any obligation to give you anything more than you deserve when it is positive. Is not under any obligation to be gracious towards you, yet he chose to be. So when you receive the goodness that you've received from God, uh, and it is not in proportion with the goodness that others have received, uh, you should still be grateful because no matter what, uh, God is always gracious to give you more than the good that you deserve. Uh, the Bible says that God is good unto the evil and to the good. Uh, he makes rain and sunshine come upon both the good and the evil and when you see that people are evil yet they experience the freshness of, of the air they experience the sunlight they experience the rain that means that uh, they owe god because they have not done good yet they receive the blessing of the father there is no way you will have a right standing to say that I deserve more than you have given to me, Lord. Because God is always even given, even to the evil, more good than they deserve. Some don't even deserve any good. In fact, the truth is that the human race deserved nothing good. We have only come into a place of righteousness and right standing because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. And our right standing is because Christ Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, took our place on the cross of Calvary and went to hell for our sake so that we might not die and end up in hell. He took our place. That's why we have a good standing with God. So God does not count our wrong. He only counts the good that we've done. Now, when it comes to this good, God is even more gracious and, unf and unfair in a way because uh, some people, we have received different levels of grace based on how much we open ourselves uh, and lay hold on the grace that the Lord Jesus Christ has made available. The Bible says that the grace of the Lord uh, has appeared unto all men. God's grace has appeared to all men, but we don't see this grace evident in the lives of all men because not all men lay hold on this grace and maximize it uh, but when you lay hold on the grace of god and you maximize it you begin to see and you begin to stay in the place of the word you see that grace and peace get multiplied unto you through what it's actually through the knowledge of the lord one of the ways grace gets multiplied in your life uh, now 
Some people have a measure of grace that God already bestowed upon them because of the assignment God has for them. When they walk in this grace and they are faithful, and they're faithful in the work they are doing, the grace increases. But you see, you can also experience a multiplication of grace through the knowledge of the Lord. The understanding, the experience you have with the Lord multiplies the grace in your life and when this grace multiplies in your life it your results feel unfair to those who have not had grace multiplied in their lives but does this mean that god is not just he is just but you see favor itself is unfair because it is not about merit it is not about works fact salvation also is not about works bible says for by grace are ye saved through faith not of works not of yourself it is actually the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast before god so everything we have everything we are we are by the grace of god we have received by the grace of god god's grace god's favor god's mercy is unfair yet god is just there's no way we will measure it and we'll see that god owes any man he will owe no man nothing but the feeling that his favor and mercy uh, sometimes tears up feels unfair yet he is just and he is true he will owe no man nothing Uh, just like we see in this story he agreed to give those who first got into the vineyard the laborers to work uh, to give each man every man a penny each and those who came and just did one hour of work about one hour of work received a penny now those who began with him started murmuring and complaining that uh, we expected to receive more since we've borne the heat of the day. You received what you deserved. And that was what I agreed to give you. He's now asking them, is your eye evil because I am good? I have only chosen to show grace unto those who came in at the last hour. And this is one thing about Christianity also. Sometimes you feel that some people uh, began very late in life and then they seem to have gone past you. You see, that's not how God works. There is a beauty in being the one who has borne the heat and stayed in the rain for the work of the Lord. God knows this satisfaction. God knows this beauty. Spiritual people also know this beauty. They know the satisfaction that though you don't seem to have much but you are suffering paul the apostle said let no man trouble me i bear in my body the mark of the lord jesus he had suffered for the cause of christ these people were glad to suffer for christ they were glad to have marks on themselves for christ it is a level of uh, understanding a level of knowledge note a level of knowledge of the lord jesus that pushes you to this level of determination for sacrifice for the cause of christ it is said that an apostle chose to be crucified upside down saying i cannot be crucified like my lord what knowledge did he possess What experience of the Lord Jesus did he have that drove him to that level? It shows that there is a beauty, there is a satisfaction in suffering for Christ. The apostle Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. But it did not stop there when it comes to knowing Christ. He said, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, even the death on the cross. Can you imagine a man desirous to be a partaker of the sufferings of Christ? To be a partaker of the sufferings. He wants to fellowship with Christ on that level, deep on that level, to suffer with him. 
that is what those who worked in the vineyard the first hour did not understand that there is a joy that they are meant to experience though they are being paid a penny the lord just said after you've done all stand and say we are unprofitable servants why is he saying that he's saying that so that you should know that your expectation should not be on the reward that you've been promised your reward you should see the lord himself as your reward he said unto abraham fear not for i am your shield and your exceeding great reward so the lord wants you to see him as your reward not the things that have been promised not that you put your heart on seeking first the kingdom of heaven and all these other things shall be added no that's not the reward that's not the main goal these are things that are byproducts byproducts are not the main goal they are just as the word is byproducts as you are doing the main thing these things just come along and attach themselves unto you goodness and mercy but they are not the main thing don't focus on the so-called goodness and mercies that are chasing after you you see the one you are chasing after you are following after is the real motivation for the journey of faith which is the lord seek in the kingdom of God first seeking the heart of the Lord knowing that God is your shield and your exceeding great reward our attention should not be shifted from the Lord Jesus it says looking unto Jesus the what the author and finisher of our faith so you think about it the story of the prodigal son he deserved nothing he deserved nothing but to come and he declared his state rightfully he said that i am not worthy to be called your son make me one of your servants he said it himself because he had already traded away wasted away his inheritance while his father lived his father was alive he took his inheritance and went away yet when he came back what happened <laughs> the father welcomed him as a son and he told the brother when the brother was complaining he said all that i have is yours that's an understanding we should have as Christians uh, when we see the grace of God upon the lives of others. You are seeking God for a particular thing, yet that thing drops easily on the laps of another. You see, that person cannot say that he has suffered as much as you have for the cross of Christ. That person only experienced a particular level of grace, probably because of the assignments god has for that person's life that will not be the basis of your reward with god that will not be the basis of how god ranks you in the spirit god knows what you have suffered for his sake trust me in this kingdom the latter shall be greater than the former it doesn't mean that the latter has labored more than the former it simply means that god's agenda is that the latter will be greater than the former whether the latter labors more or not so our attention should be what god has placed before us and we should run the race everybody fulfilling the ministry that god has placed before him when you fulfill the ministry that god has placed before you it doesn't matter whether you've won as many souls as some other people or you operate in power as some people that you desire to operate in power as god knows your ability the ability that he has given to you and 
how much you will be able to do all your life if you are faithful to this calling then you have done god proud god is not going to relegate you before those who have done more because their abilities were more no he loves you as much as he loves them they are not more valuable to the kingdom than you are just focus on what god has called you to do he knows the person that is doing what seems least in the kingdom of heaven yet everyone is important before him so focus on your calling magnify your office do not let anyone look down upon what god has called you to do praise god so we must always have this at the back of our mind what god has called us to do i will fulfill my calling and i will not look upon another man's calling to judge myself the bible says that they that compare themselves with themselves are not what are not wise we must be wise there's no time to waste looking at another man's calling there's no time to waste being jealous of another we have to focus on what the holy spirit is telling us to do per time and we do it with all our hearts and we do it faithfully in doing this you are okay you are honored in heaven you are valuable and precious christ is always happy with those who obey the voice of the holy spirit because you don't know the effect of what you are doing upon the whole total bigger picture it is when you get to heaven that you realize how important those little things that the lord has ministered into your heart to do now you discover that you could even by your ministry have saved a great general from falling away from the faith when you re- get to heaven you realize how important your work of faith your work of love has been praise god praise god second timothy chapter 1 verse 9 to 10 says who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling not according to our works but according to his purpose and grace which was given us in christ jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our savior jesus christ who hath abolished death and brought brought life and immortality to light through the gospel oh so we have a calling and this calling is a holy calling and now says that this calling is not according to our works that he called somebody to the working of special miracles and another to the ministry of sight visions delivering the word of god at the moment and some people to the ministry of helps is not according to the works that they've done it is simply according to god's purpose and grace so number one is according to his purpose number two according to his grace now don't forget that we said that grace can multiply and increase so even if god has called you and you are working in that purpose when you work faithfully in that purpose you see one thing increases it is grace in your life that grace increases and by the word of god by the knowledge of the lord himself that you have that grace will not just increase it will what multiply so we must first understand that when you see some manifestations in the life of some people it is according to the purpose of god and god's purpose for someone's life does not make his purpose for your life are less important because the purpose of uh, god for someone's life is great and appears to be important here on the side of this side of eternity this side where we have time 
does not mean that his purpose for your own life is not important. God is actually trusting you to hold on to what he has called you to do and to do it joyfully with cheers, with happiness, with joy in your heart. Trusting that you are able to take that so-called humble purpose and not be grumbling and not complain. And he knows that you will do that as you he wants you to do it. It is left to you and it's left for you now not to fail him because he proposed in his heart that you will do what you are doing. It is left for you not to fail him by gum- grumbling and complaining. Praise God. So, our purpose, the things we do, our calling is not according to our works, but according to God's grace. Another thing we must take into consideration is God appears both unfair and unjust sometimes to us because we do not see what he sees. He sees the hearts of men. You don't know what the state of some people's hearts are. Some people seem to walk in faith, but they are in unbelief. Completely in unbelief. They do not believe God. They do not trust God. And when you walk in unbelief, though you were walking at a particular level, you could be ungrafted. You could be severed. Because what actually makes us stand is our faith in Christ. Praise God. And this faith is not complete without a holy fear. Matthew chapter 21 verse 28 to 31 says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. Matthew 21, 28 to 31. Verse 29 says, He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him, The first, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Wow, isn't that amazing? When you look at the ending part and you hear the publicans and the harlots, those who are unfaithful with money, those who are crooks with money, and the prostitutes enter into the kingdom of God before those who have received Christ at an early age and have walked by his precepts, and have labored in faith. And God is saying that this, the Lord Jesus is saying that this will enter into the kingdom of God before the religious people. He explained earlier why this is. Some people appear to be doing the will of God, but in their heart there is no faith connection to this work that they are doing some people appear to be in church doing great service for god but their hearts have not aligned with the plans and purposes of god for their lives yet an unbeliever comes into the gathering is ministered to and immediately is on fire for christ and he hears go and he goes. He hears come and he comes. But the one who has been in faith begins to debate. Should I go? Is this scripturally right? Yet you've had that witness in your spirit. A strong witness. Confirming to you that this is the voice of God. You debate yourself out of the will of God. You rationalize and analyze yourself out of the will of God. You see, God 
is Lord over the written word that we follow. It takes the spirit of God to make alive the written word of God for you to know the will of God per time. So you cannot rationalize the instructions of God that the spirit of God has given unto you. You cannot rationalize your way out of it with the written word of God. The Bible says that the letter killeth. Meaning that thing that has been written kills if you want to just follow it. But the spirit gives life. It's the spirit that makes alive what you've written. So when you hear that voice within you, run with it. And one thing you always discover is that that word is only confirmed by the written word. What God tells you will always be confirmed by the written word. The way you will know that it is not God speaking to you is that it will not be confirmed by the written word. But you see, at every point in time, when that voice comes to you, you will have a confirmation in the written word of God. Because the written word of God does not contradict. Somehow, sometimes it appears to contradict. But when you judge what you have received uh, and that you've been convinced by what the Lord is telling you, by the impression is given to you and the conviction is given to you, you begin to see how what he told you really aligns with the scripture. You have greater truth and that's when you say someone has received a deeper revelation because truth is progressive. You will understand the word to a certain point and that understanding, that level of understanding you have is your limitation when it comes to the work of God. But when you progress in understanding and revelation, your ability increases. The limit is taken off. And this is what we need to develop as Christians such that those who are just coming in the faith will not just run ahead. They are running and doing the will of God, not because they have the understanding of what God's word has said uh, like we do, but because though this word is from God, the written word, it can be a stumbling block withholding you and barring you from running ahead in faith, uh, it will be one thing that will be stopping you from pursuing what God has told you uh, in faith. Because you're now rationalizing it. And the reason that is, is because you're not checking with the convictions that the Spirit of God is giving to you. Or you have turned to be carnal. You fed your body and your soul more than your spirit. So you are not perceiving the voice of the spirit very clearly. But when you perceive the voice of the spirit very clearly, it is always in alignment with the word of God. If you get to a certain level where it is not the literal words that you've put in your heart that is guiding you, you've understood by reason of use, you've perfected the art of hearing God. That you can be certain that this is God. The Lord Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. They know the voice of the shepherd. You've perfected the art of knowing when it is God and when it is not God. That is actually the desire of Christ. The desire of God. That he will be able to speak to you directly. But while you are developing, you will develop the Art of hearing and knowing what the word of God really is by being guided by the written word. Because the man, the human mind can be slow. So to conform your soul as God has made your spirit, you need the word. Yet it is not just the word. So the spirit of God will have to confirm to you that this is exactly what the spirit of god is saying to you at this moment and with that you will be streaming the heart of god live not what you've downloaded 
but you will be streaming it directly as the lord is saying it you will be getting it as the lord is thinking it and feeling it you will be getting it because the bible says who had known the mind of the lord that may instruct him it says but we have the mind of christ and if we have the mind of christ we must function in this race with the mind of christ praise god hallelujah so the th- last thing i'll be saying here is that faith in christ is important but this faith is not complete without a holy fear this holy fear keeps you in faith romans chapter 11 verse 13 to 24 it says for i speak to you gentiles in as much as i am an apostle of the gentiles i magnify in mine office if by any means i may provoke to emulation then which are my flesh and might save some of them for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead for if the first fruit be holy the lump is also holy and if the root be holy so are the branches and if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree were graft were graft in among them and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree boast not against the branches but if thou boast thou bearest not the root but the root thee thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that i might be grafted in well because of unbelief they were broken off and thou standest by faith be not high-minded but fear for if god spared not the natural branches take heed lest he also spare not thee behold therefore the goodness and severity of god on them which fell severity but toward thee goodness if thou continue in his goodness or the, if thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou also shall be cut off and they also if they abide not still in unbelief shall be grafted in for god is able to graft them in again for if thou wert caught out of the olive tree which is wild by nature and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree how much more shall these which shall which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree praise god so the apostle is telling us not to boast against the israelites who have not received christ because they did not believe in him unbelief made them cut off it got them cut off he now says that the reason we are standing in christ and are part of the olive tree today is because of our belief but we should not boast against them but we should fear because you see the one who grafted us in can also ensure that we are cut off if we don't continue in his goodness and if we do not fear this fear is a fear that keeps us in faith is a fear that helps us check in our heart am i still in the faith that is the fear it is a holy fear it is an accepted fear in the body of christ a fear that makes you check yourself every time am i actually still in the faith if you are always checking you see nothing will catch you on our way because god has promised to keep you but it is your own duty to check am i still in faith so one thing that got us grafted in in the first place onto this olive tree is our faith and what got them cut off was their unbelief ensure that you walk in faith be fearful of not walking in faith because it is really a fearful thing 
to have once walked in faith and then stopped walking in faith. In fact, for some kind of people who have experienced God in a certain way, the apostle says that it is impossible to bring them back in. So we must be careful. And in this work, we must not look down on those who are falling. It's a thing we must be careful not to do. Don't boast against those who are falling by the wayside. Either Jews or Gentile. Let that fear be in you. To always ask yourself, am I in faith? If we are not careful, we experience the severity of God. If we do not maintain this holy fear to check whether we are in faith, we experience the severity of God. But, when we are careful, humble, always checking with this holy fear, am I still in the faith? You keep on experiencing the goodness of God and he will ensure that you, as much as you do your part, that you remain in faith. And that means that you are in his goodness. Praise God. So just bow your head and say, Lord, help me to walk in your favor, your grace, and to keep the faith that I may experience continually your goodness, that I may always be a part of this olive tree, that I will not be cut off as a branch. Help my faith to be strengthened in you. Day by day, that I may feast on your word and my faith is built strong. That I may have myself edified with the foundation of this faith, which is your faith. Help me, Lord. Help us, Father. King of glory, help us. That we will experience your goodness. That you will be positively unfair towards us. Meaning that we will experience your grace and favor. That the good that we deserve, we will experience it and even more. The evil that we deserve, that you will always wave it off. And that we will always be conscious to check whether we are in faith or not. Help us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, because of your word that has come unto us today to bless us. We thank you, Lord, because you've opened our eyes to see that we need to always be in faith. That we need to always be in faith and to always be and walk in your goodness. Uh, That we need to check whether we are in alignment with your plans and purposes for our lives. That we wouldn't be cut off. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That we will experience your goodness and not the severity of God. Help us, Father. At the end of everything, we'll have a great cause to glorify your name. Knowing fully that we've done what you asked us to do. That we'll not look at another man's work and grace uh, and then leave the work that you have given unto us. uh, That we will abide in the calling that you have called us, Lord. uh, That we'll run the race that you've set uh, before us, Lord. Help us, Father. Thank you, Father, because you've answered our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise God.